Being lonely versus loneliness. What's the difference? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Michael Novak, and welcome to this little video. I'm sorry for being gone for a little while, um, and I'm sorry for not uploading more, uh, but I have some seriously exciting things planned and I, that I think you're really gonna dig. Uh, but today, I wanna talk about something that is really close to me. I wanna talk about being alone. I wanna talk about what it means, and I wanna talk about uh, how to teach yourself how to spend time alone. So first and foremost, let me give you some context uh, in terms of me and my life. So growing up, I was very introverted and very shy. And uh, so therefore I didn't really have the biggest social network, but I had friends, I had friends and I wasn't alone at all really. Cause I, you know, I lived with my family and, and I had friends that I hung out with and whatnot. So I was very rarely alone. And um, then I became a teenager. I went to high school and I started losing weight at the age of 18. And after high school, I had lost a little bit of weight and I had gotten some some uh, some confidence to sort of break out of my bubble. And I started on an education as a film and TV production technician. And I thought to myself, this is it. I don't want to be the shy and introverted kid anymore. I want to be social. I want to be outgoing. So I decided I'm going to change this. It was the first time in my life that I was going to start in a class with a bunch of people that I didn't know. So I decided decided to use it as an opportunity to change and change my perception and the, and the way that people view me. And it worked and I got part, uh, I got to be part of the social circle and the social clique. And all of a sudden my social network just grew uh, rapidly and I got a lot of new friends. And then I quit the education as a film to production, as you can see more about, hear more about in my video on that topic. It'll be in the, in the note card. But Nonetheless, I quit that education and I started on the education as a truck driver. And all of a sudden it was a new class with new people. And again, I thought, fuck it, I'm not going to be the shy introverted kid. So I, uh, I became part of the social clique and I got a lot of friends and social connections. So basically what I'm trying to say is in like the span of a year, I had gone from having a social circle of maybe two, three, four friends to having a social circle of maybe 30 or 40. Now, a lot of these people, I'm not going to go into details, but a lot of these people were very fucked up in a lot of ways. And when I realized this, I knew I had to clean up my life in terms of friendships and my social relations. Long story short, I got rid of a lot of those relations and uh, ended up having only two people in my life that I would spend every moment with. And then back in January of 2021, my life was pretty much turned upside down. Um, my best friend that I spent every day with found himself a girlfriend, move in, moved in with her, he threw me out of the apartment that we lived in together at the at the time. And the other person that I spent, spent a lot of time with uh, told me that they didn't want to spend time with me anymore. And basically, I uh, chose not to be in my life anymore. Anyway, it sounds very sad. I know, very depressing. But just tag along. Just uh, hear me out. Uh, so basically, what I'm trying to say is, for the first time back in January, February of, uh, of last year was the first time I had moved out as well from home and, and from my parents and everything. And so it was the first time in my life that I was truly alone, something I had never really experienced before. And for the past a little over a year, I have been living on my own for the first time in my life. And it's taught me a lot of things because at that time I was anxious. I was scared to spend time alone. I was scared by the thought of even being alone. Um, because for me, and I think it's very sort of a generalized thing in, in our society that loneliness and being alone coexist and go together. And it's just not, it's not the case. Like you can spend time alone without being lonely and you can spend time with a lot of people and still feel lonely. So it's not, they don't coexist. They don't go together. They can be mutually exclusive. And I didn't know this. I had to, to sort of learn that. And it's been honestly the greatest thing that I've ever done. I mean, living on my own for the past year and a half ish has been the most amazing thing. And I enjoy it so much and I don't feel lonely whatsoever. I enjoy my own company. I enjoy spending time alone, but it was hard, man. The transition was hard because I was so scared of spending time alone. And all of a sudden, because of things that I was that I wasn't in control of, I found myself being alone for the first time really in my life. 
I had to teach myself how to spend time alone. And so for the past year and a half, that's been my passion project to learn how to spend time alone. And I think I've gotten pretty good at it, um, but it's hard, man. It's really hard. And it's definitely something that I think is a, is a process that you have to keep working on. And so because we're talking about this subject, I wanted to bring in an expert on this subject, uh, my good friend and collaborator, Ray Castro, because if there's anyone that knows about spending time alone and being good at it, it's Ray Castro. So um, I think we should just get him in and just talk about this for a little while. Uh, welcome, Ray Castro, to the studio. Welcome. Uh, thank I, you for I, coming. I guess I'm the loneliness expert. <laughs> well, I wanted to bring you in because I've just talked a little bit about uh, learning how to spend time alone and, and the difference between being lonely and being alone. Definitely. Because they're two different things. And I thought I would bring you in because you live on your own. Yeah. And you have been for the past 12 years. Yes. So I wanted to hear your take on it in terms of learning how to spend time alone and how to be happy being alone. Because like I was just saying, you know, you can be in a room full of people and still feel alone, alone and lonely. And you can be on your own and not feel lonely or alone. So, yeah. uh, so I just wanted to hear your take on it. Like, it depends on what kind of loneliness it is. Because like you said, you can be in a room full of people, but you can still feel loneliness and you can actually have a lot of people caring about you, but that sometimes is not even good enough. That's true. When I first started being lonely was because I got injured my back. Before that, I was never lonely. You were very social, had a lot of friends, a big social connection. Yes, I was yes. with people every day. I was just saying that if, for me, I ended up being scared actually of being alone and spending time alone with my own thoughts. Like yeah. it, it, it was sort of an anxiety I had. The question is why haven't we learned about being alone in school? Why is everything in school so social? You gotta be with, you gotta be one-on-one -on -one when you go across the street with your classmates and everything, you know, there's never- You gotta be in teams. Yeah, you gotta be a team. You gotta t do teamwork too with the homework. You gotta help the others and they want you to help them. That's true. That's we true. don't learn about being alone. Uh, we learn about loneliness, but we can overcome that by being with somebody. The problem is you can't do that when you are alone. Like me, I was in the hospital so long that, you know, I, I was getting used to being alone because either- You were forced to. Yeah, I was forced to it by, by life itself because I, I really wanted it you know like the old days me being in the studio having lots of people in the house making food for everybody having a good time you know or we'll go to parties and everything but when I started getting you know these back problems I had back in the days I, yeah Ray got around uh, what eight nine surgeries eight, eight no eight, six six in the six, back six in the back one hip operation and both knee Operation. Yeah, so, Ray was in the hospital a lot. Yeah. I started thinking about this whole sort of topic because I remember with my mom, like uh, most people know, my mom passed away three yeah. years ago. But, but you know, she was with my dad for 35 years. And 35 I, 35 years. 35 That's years a long time. Since she was 19. And when she was 19 and met my dad, she lived at home with her parents. So my mom had never been alone. And then back in 2018, um, she was put in this rehabilitation facility uh, where she was for about a month or two. And it was the first time in, my li in her life that my mom was truly alone, no, that yeah. she had her own room for the first time in this facility and, and we were not there constantly. You know, I had to go to work, my brother had to go to work, my dad couldn't be there, you know, 24 seven. So for the first time, actually in my mom's life, she had to, 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 to spend time alone and sleep alone and be alone. And she developed anxiety over it. She yeah, got really bad anxiety. Let's talk about that. Because you can be alone physically and you can be alone mentally. And I learned to be alone in both ways because I couldn't get out of bed and I didn't want nobody around me because all I had to talk about was the sad part of me being through this shit. So so I, I started pushing everybody away. So you push people away because of this and became isolated or alone or both 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 definitely because suddenly i couldn't m move my body so it was mentally and then i started writing this book and that's why i wanted to talk about this book because this book actually helped me talk to myself show it in the camera yeah 
You know, sometimes you don't want to go to a party or something, and there's a little voice telling you, you shouldn't go, stay home. And some of us take that voice and be like, ah, it doesn't matter. You go to a party and it sucks. But sometimes it's the fear, because I was afraid, exactly. afraid of... When I started talking to people again, I was afraid I was not going to be normal anymore, because right. I worked so much on myself. I was, like, learning suddenly about what kind of movies I liked. I was learning about what kind of foods I like. I was learning about shit. I never even thought about because when I was with people, all we did was what they wanted to do. So basically what I'm hearing is that it's about independence. It is because some of us don't even know ourselves until we are totally alone because we got nobody else to talk about. That's true. And that's like I was saying, like for, the, for me, the best thing I've ever done was move in on my own and start living on my own and spending time on my own. You learn shit. You learn shit. You know, my mom, for example, and a lot of people experience the same thing where they go through life and they're never truly alone because no. they always have somebody. I honestly think everyone should try it i think everyone should try at a point in their life to live on their own and to learn how to to cope alone and be alone because a lot of people end up being codependent on their partner especially yeah we're really social amazing. beings we're social creatures we seek comfort and comfort we seek comfort in other people yeah. so i just think it's very important that you you sort of teach yourself how to be alone and you have been single for 12 years now yeah. and living on your own and i just wanted to ask you what that's done to you like how do you feel about loneliness and being alone today i do feel lonely but i remind myself that i'm not lonely i can be in the studio you know that i can be in the studio right now totally right. alone but back in the days, I wanted somebody to be there so I could ask, does this sound good? I needed somebody's validation for what I was doing. Now, I'm only searching my validation. Do I want to do this? So you've learned to trust more in yourself and your own opinion. Yeah. Back in the days when I started this journey, doing things by myself, I was const constantly asking myself, what the fuck do I want to eat? What, what do I want to watch? What do I want to do? And I couldn't answer so many. I was like, what's my favorite? color why haven't i thought about that i'm 40 years old why don't i know what my favorite color is why right. haven't i appreciate all the colors and chose one that i like my favorite that's what? interesting because we never we we don't think about asking ourselves questions when we're around other people so in terms of experiencing uh being alone and learning how to spend time alone you've gotten to know yourself pretty well much better much than better. i ever ever thought i knew myself I, I suddenly started realizing that i never had boundaries i right. was mr yes guy i was like everybody was like calling me you want to hang out yeah you want to do some music yeah you want to do some video yeah i, I couldn't say no because i was afraid of the no i have always had sort of a, an unstable uh, mental health and it's always sort of gone up and down ever since i was a young teen and my my mental health has never been more stable than it is now yeah because i live on my own because i spend time on my own so i you, i think you get to know yourself a lot better and you get to ask yourself questions and and i think in general you get the chance to be more in contact with yourself and your feelings and your mental health i think people should know that being alone is not a bad thing Especially if you want to get to know yourself a little bit more. But I like the fact that you are living on your own. You are like the king of your home now. You you can eat whatever the fuck you want. You can put everything you want in the fridge. You can go to sleep when you want. You can get up when you want. You can actually paint the house the color you want. You can pretty much do everything you want at your house. Yes. But when you start, you know, mixing some romantic feelings with another energy, another person, it's never going to be the same because then you have to like ask is it okay or she might ask is it okay so now you're starting to like change the way you thought before i think to sum it all up it's all about balance because i think you can be in a relationship and you can live with other people your family or whatever and still you know spend time alone i think it's just important because you never know what's going to happen in life and life can kick you down and if you never if you never teach yourself how to spend time alone and how to be alone and life kicks you in the balls and uh and you find yourself alone it can lead to some very dangerous dangerous things yeah. if, if you've never learned how to cope on your own 
for example, when my mom passed, yeah. right? I was just working. I was just working and working and spending time with people and getting high as well a lot. Yeah. And like just, it made me forget. Staying productive or like, well, not productive, but active mm. and like spending time with people and not being alone. I became really good at just forgetting the thing that I was going through. Yeah. I, I became very good at forgetting my sorrow and, and just sort of moving on. After a year and a half after my mom died, was the first time it actually hit me and, and started to... So again, at the same time that I found myself being alone for the really the first time in my life is when it started to hit me with my sorrow and my mom and everything. And, and I had to work through that because it was getting to a point where I couldn't I couldn't even do my job and I couldn't be at work because it was so bad in terms of my mom and she was so much in my head and I couldn't focus on anything. And anyway, the point is, I should have experienced that sooner. I'm just saying like there's a habit in terms of that, in terms of forgetting if you if you move quickly through life and you're never really alone and you're always busy and all that stuff you forget to I, take care of yourself and your mental health if you just keep going and keep spending time do, with other people you and do, you do. become codependent on other people you know to sum it all up it's all about rehabilitation rehabilitation on yourself on yourself and it's about uh it's about that dangerous balance but i want to ask you just the last thing here for me it's been the best thing i've ever done to spend time on my own and learn how to be alone. Has it been the same for you? Would you would you encourage other people to live on their own or you know cope on their own? 100%. Because as soon as you start being on your own, you're gonna notice something, that you miss something. You miss something to do like a hobby. You need something in your life if you don't have people around you. You need something to think about when you get up in the morning. Like some people have video games, some people have paintings, some people have puzzles, you know. So you have to have that. If you don't have that, then it's the perfect thing to do is to be alone and figure out what do I like to do for me. Until that, then it's going to be a problem. You're going to be doing everything other people want to do and not what you want to do anymore. It's very uh, poetic, Ray, and I think that's the perfect way to end. Go and check out Ray's channel if it's something you want to do. Go check out his socials. I've left them in the description. Ray is very active on TikTok. You're also on Instagram and you're on Facebook and you're on Spotify and you're on Tidal and you're on I'm, Apple Music and I'm you're everywhere. everywhere. Ray's I'm everywhere. everywhere. You're on Twitch too. Yeah. Interesting. Ray's on every single social media platform good or bad take it for what you will i've left all the links in the description if you want to check that out uh, but i think we should wrap up the video yeah. thank you so much for being here ray castro You're welcome. thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to me about this very important and serious it subject. is important it is important. and uh thank you to you for watching and for listening to us and uh yeah take care of yourselves and we will see you should we reveal our next project you will see us again very, very soon, soon very, very soon. soon with a brand new song and a brand new music video so i think and i think you're gonna really dig I'm it look, so i'm looking forward to that me too this is gonna be real this is gonna get real so i think you're gonna really dig it but yeah until then take care <laughs>